Tutorial 4 Defining the Wall Geometry in AnchorWall Software Version 6.0 In the Stations tab, we define the wall geometry by inputting top and bottom of wall grades at specific locations or stations along the length of the wall. The value for each station is essentially the length of wall at any particular point measured from the beginning. Stations or positions along the wall are cumulative. In other words, if the first station or wall start was 0 feet, then last station would be equal to the total length of the wall. At these stations, we can input the grades at the top and bottom of the wall to define that face view of our wall. Keep in mind the top of wall grade is the grade immediately behind the coping unit at the top of the wall and the bottom of wall grade is the finished grade in front of the wall, not the actual founding elevation of the wall. As mentioned, the first station is the beginning of the wall as if you were standing in front of it, looking at it from left to right. Just to ensure your understanding of how the Stations tab relates to an actual plan view of a retaining wall, I will bring up a sample CAD drawing of the wall we are designing. In this grading plan, a simple retaining wall is shown in magenta. The proposed wall is retaining a slope above it, near the top of the drawing. The low side is the parking area and building. As the top of the drawing is high and the bottom of the drawing is low, the start of the wall would therefore be the left or west end. You will see that at various points along the length of the wall, the designer has provided TW and BW grades. The stations that relate to these grades are measured from the beginning of the wall. We will input station 1 as 0 feet and input the TW and VW grades. Notice that some stations only have either the TW or BW grades. This is OK. AnchorWall software has a built-in interpolate function that takes care of these. We will go through the example and input the stations and grades. Using our dimension function in CAD, we will measure the portion of the stations relative to the beginning of the wall. Note that the stations that do not have either a top of wall or bottom of wall grade show the placeholder word CALC or calc. This means that the AnchorWall software will automatically calculate these values for you. Now that our stations have been input, we can hit the Resolve Stations button to automatically interpolate between grades and fill in the missing TW and BW grades. An elevation view of our wall geometry is now generated. We have just demonstrated how the wall geometry can be manually input into AnchorWall software. AnchorWall software has also been equipped with the ability to automatically import grading information directly from CAD using an optional CAD tool called AWOL. More information on the optional AWOL CAD tool can be found at AnchorWall.com, but for the time being, we will show you how briefly it works. The AWOL CAD routine is a powerful tool that makes gathering data on your wall quick and easy, as well as correctly drawing the real plan view of the wall. In many cases, a civil designer or architect will simply illustrate the retaining wall on their grading plan as a line with a nominal thickness. In reality, because most retaining walls have a batter or lean to them, the higher the wall is, the larger the footprint it will have. The AWOL tool uses a complex routine to solve for the actual outward projection of the bottom of wall due to the wall batter. I will quickly run the AWOL routine just to demonstrate it. However, more comprehensive tutorials are available. First, I will select the AWOL Drawing Setup icon. I will choose Feet and a 1 to 50 annotation scale. Next, I will select the AWOL Stations icon and enter the stations along the length of the wall.
Note that I do not have to go through the time-consuming task of measuring each station location from the beginning of the wall. Just by selecting the retaining wall baseline at various points, a wall correctly identifies the station value at that location. Note that if a station is missing either the top of wall or bottom of wall grade, just hit enter when prompted and a marker called TBD will be inserted. Once the station are entered, the interpolate function will calculate the missing grades which have been designed with TBD. At this point, the grading can be imported directly into the anchor wall software. However, I will just show you two remaining functions. As mentioned before, a wall can draw the actual plan view of the wall, taking into account wall batter. By selecting the Create Retaining Wall icon, selecting our baseline, picking the batter or low side, entering the wall width, and entering the wall batter angle. A wall draws the actual footprint of the wall. Note that at higher locations, the projection of the bottom of wall out from the coping is significantly more than at lower sections of the wall. This feature will often prevent issues with wall location on site, particularly when it comes to property lines, sidewalks, and other structures in front of the wall or other space constraints. Now with a click of the mouse, a wall creates an elevation view of the general wall geometry and estimation of the exposed face area of wall. Note that this just gives a preliminary estimate of the wall quantities because it does not take into account wall embedment. This will be calculated when the grading is imported to the anchor wall software. Finally, by selecting the export data icon, all grading information is saved in a file that can be imported to the anchor wall software. A wall can be used on a PDF drawing as well, as long as the PDF is underlayered into AutoCAD at the correct scale. Now that we have created an A wall file, we can go back to Anchor Wall software and import all the grading information automatically. The A wall CAD tool will save the designer time and increase accuracy. By selecting the import function, we automatically bring in the wall grading info instantly as compared to the manual input we just went through. Either way, we have our wall geometry. There are two different methods to define the grading or slopes around the wall. One method is to input crest and toe geometry in the Stations tab. This requires the designer knowing the top of slope or crest elevations and bottom of slope or toe elevations relative to the top and bottom of wall. The other method is to define the slopes and offsets once you are in the Loading Conditions tab. In the Loading tab, the slope is simply defined as an angle in degrees and the crest offset in feet or meters. If the crest and toe geometry is input in the Stations tab, you cannot override it once you get to the Loading Conditions tab. I will run through a simple example using the crest and toe geometry. The crest geometry defines the slopes and slope offsets above the wall. This information is then used in the analysis of the wall in the form of applied loading. The toe geometry defines the slopes and slope offsets below the wall. This information is then used to determine the minimum required wall embedment in accordance with the selected design guidelines. Note that other factors such as global stability or unsuitable soil conditions may require further embedment than the minimums noted in the design guidelines. The crest and toe geometry is also included in the global stability output file that is created by Anchor Wall software which often saves time when modeling this analysis. Looking at our grading plan again, we see that grading information has been provided to define the slopes above and below the wall. Above the wall, on the high side, we see that there is a slope that goes back varying distances from the top of the wall. At station 1, which is the beginning of the wall, the top of slope or crest elevation is 101 feet and the crest is offset can be measured along a line perpendicular to the wall face. Below station 1, the toe elevation, which is the bottom of the slope below the wall, is 96 feet, and the bottom of the slope or toe offset is 5.7 feet from the bottom of the wall. We can now input these values in the station's input field in anchor wall software. You do not need to have crest and toe geometry values for all stations. AnchorWall software will iterate between stations that do not have values provided. 
Just make sure to check that the automated geometry produced still matches the grading plan. We will skip Station 2 as no explicit grading information is provided and move on to Station 3. As we did with Station 1, we will determine the crest elevation, crest offset, toe elevation and toe offset and enter them into anchor wall software. As no explicit bottom of slope grading is provided, we will just leave it blank and resolve it to later. We will continue with Station 4 and Station 5, the last station at the end of the wall. Because we have some values that are missing, shown in red with the word CALC, we hit the Resolve Stations button so AnchorWall software automatically iterates between stations and fills in the missing information. We will now move along to the Panels tab where AnchorWall software covers the wall geometry with the chosen SRW block. The Panelize routine ensures the minimum wall embedment specified in the design criteria is covered and that the top wall block exceeds the top of wall grades. Every time the wall steps up or down by one block, a new panel is created. Since these panels are different heights and may have different loading conditions, each panel has to be designed independently of those on the left or right of it. The panels are numbered on the left side of the panel screen, starting at panel 1. By clicking on the graphic, we can select any individual panel as it becomes highlighted. Holding down the control key, we can navigate through the panels with the left and right arrow keys. Information on the selected panel is provided below the elevation view. Note that included in this information is the top slope and toe slope as defined by our crest and toe geometry, as well as the required embedment for that panel based on the NCMA embedment criteria. The controls at the bottom of the panel screen allows us to view the elevation view in various ways, such as zooming in and out, zooming to extents, or horizontally or vertically justified. Since retaining walls are typically much longer than they are high, when the view is vertically justified, only a portion of the wall length is shown. To pan left and right, simply grab the graphic and pan. This can also be done with the slider below the elevation view. Note that the highest panel is designated with a small arrow underneath it. Many designers start designing at this panel as it may often be the most critical. Along the top of the screen are the wall settings. These are settings that you can define how the panelization works on all panels. The defaults for these values are defined in the design criteria. However, the defaults are minimum values. In some cases, the designer may require greater wall embedment than what would be required by the NCMA minimum standards. An example of this would be a steep slope in front of the wall. This can be handled by either setting the minimum number of courses to be embedded or the percentage of wall embedment. Note that if the toe geometry is set in the Stations tab, the values for the minimum embedment are set through this criteria. They may be increased but cannot be less than what is specified by the toe slope. In other cases, if a wall has a great deal of stepping at the bottom, it may be preferable to bury more material and not have as many steps to reduce the construction labor. In this situation, the designer can set the base stepping courses to two or more. You can see that by doing this, we increase the total embedment but reduce the number of panels. The base vertical adjustment function allows the user to move the entire wall up or down a maximum of one block height. This function is helpful if a very specific grade is trying to be met at either the top or bottom of wall. The total wall area is shown adjacent to this. The designer has the option of including the coping in the wall height or not. You can see the difference in the panelization by turning this on or off. In this example, we will not include the coping in the wall height. To the left of the elevation view, we have the option of modifying individual panels. We can split a panel which divides one panel into two 
or merge panels, which is the opposite and joins adjacent panels. You can also manually manipulate a panel with the arrow controls. A list of short keys or hot keys to perform all of these functions is found in the AnchorWall software help file. The designer can adjust the embedment for individual panels as well. An example of this would be if only one portion of the wall had a steep slope on it and the designer only wanted to increase embedment for a few panels. Finally, the designer can input markers along the length of the wall. Since we are taking a planned view of the wall and essentially stretching it out flat on the screen, we lose the planned geometry of the wall. Using the markers, we can input locations of corners, curves, or other significant elements to refer our elevation view back to the plan. As a side note, the AWOL CAD tool allows the user to automatically import these markers directly from CAD. Now that we have defined our wall geometry, we have to apply loading conditions to all panels. We will do this in the next tutorial, tutorial number 5.